Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys about aggregation in MongoDB. Now, aggregation basically allows us to uh, process data records and we can return computed results. So essentially what we can do is we can find out a bunch of cool information about the stuff that's already inside of our collections. So we can get information uh, that's not necessarily stored in the collections, but we can like do computations on that information and uh, figure out different information. So it's gonna be pretty cool. Aggregation is a pretty common task for any database. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys basically how that works in MongoDB. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a little collection. So I actually have some code here for a new database collection. So it's called purchase orders. And basically this is just going to store like some different purchase orders. Like maybe we're setting up a database for a store. Obviously this is very simple, but you know, it's a simple example so we can learn the concept. So over here, each of these entries has the product that got sold how much it got sold for and the customer who bought it. So we have like the customer's name, the amount that they spent on the item and then the item itself. And you'll see here, like some of these show up multiple times. So like Mike shows up a couple times, Karen shows up a couple times in the database and also different products. So toothbrush shows up here a couple of times, pizza shows up a couple of times. So we have some information that's kind of like repeated down there. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can use aggregation in order to get all sorts of information from this purchase orders collection. But our first order of business is to actually create it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, copy this bad boy and I'll have a, a link to the code in the description below. But we'll put this down here and we'll go ahead and uh, insert all that. So all that stuff got inserted into the database. Uh, why don't we go and check out the MongoDB compass just to see. So if we refresh this, you'll see now we have our purchase orders table or a purchase orders collection. And then down here we have all of our purchase orders. So there's all of our items. So now let's get into aggregation. The first thing I want to show you guys um, before we you know, really dive into aggregation though is a couple of different uh, MongoDB functions that we can use. So these are kind of cool and I'll just show you guys uh, a few different examples. So I'm gonna give us a couple different prompts and we'll see if we can figure out how to solve them. So here's a prompt that says, find out how many toothbrushes were sold, right? So this is kind of interesting. Like how can we find out the number of toothbrushes that were sold from the purchase orders table? Well, I can come down here and I can do something like this. So I can say db.purchaseorders.count. So I can use this count function over here and then inside of parentheses, I can put a little object and this is basically just telling um, the count function what field we want to count. So over here, I just want to count toothbrushes. So product was the name of the field and we want to count all the toothbrushes uh, from that field. So we can go ahead and put that down here and now you'll see when I run this that we get back three. So three toothbrushes were sold um, in the purchase orders table. And actually let's take a look to make sure. So yeah, it looks like one, two, three toothbrushes. So that was right. So that's basically how we could count a specific uh, entry in a specific field. So we can count to see how many toothbrushes were sold. We could also do something different. So let's put up another prompt here. So it says, find a list of all products sold. So basically we want to get a list of all the individual products that were sold, but I'm assuming in this case, we don't want any duplicates, right? So we sold three toothbrushes, but we just want a list of all the products. We don't necessarily want, you know, all of the, uh, entries inside of the purchase orders table. So what we can do is we can use something called distinct. So I could come down here and I'm just going to paste this. It says db.purchaseorders.distinct. So distinct will return entries in the purchase orders table that are distinct. And so over here we can return distinct products. So inside these quotation marks, I'm just putting the name of the field. So we have the product field. So this will give me all of the distinct products that were sold. I'm going to put this down here and you'll see we get this array. So it's toothbrush, guitar, milk, and pizza. So even though we sold three toothbrushes and even though we probably sold multiple pizzas as well, it's only gonna give us one because we use distinct. And so this is how we could just get, you know, a list of all the products that were sold without any of the duplicates. So those are a couple of useful functions. And those are two different ways that, you know, you can kind of aggregate information, right? So we can get information about the data inside of the collection. But now I'm gonna to talk to you guys about aggregation. So here is another prompt I'm gonna throw up here. It says, uh, find the total amount of money spent by each customer. So this is kind of interesting, right? We have all of our purchase orders. And as we saw before, the same customer sometimes purchased uh, or made different purchases. So how can we find the total amount of money spent by each customer? Well, what we can do is we can use something called aggregate. So I can say DB dot purchase orders. So the name of the collection and then aggregate. 
and then over here inside of these parentheses we can put an array so we're gonna put an array here and then inside of this array we're gonna make an open and close curly bracket and I'm just want to say match and what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as a filter so over here I'm just saying match uh, and then an open and close curly bracket. So that's gonna match anything. That'll match every uh, entry in the collection. And then down here, I'm going to say group. And this will group all that stuff um, together. So this will basically aggregate everything together. So here I'm gonna say ID, um, and then over here I'll say customer. And basically what this means is that the ID of the things that we get back is going to be um, the name of the customer. So we're basically going to group these by the customer and then total is going to be another uh, field we're going to get back. And I'm just going to say over here, um, sum. And sum is going to mean that we're going to add everything together. So here I'm going to add together all of the totals. And so this is how we can aggregate something. So I'm going to copy this. We'll put this down here. And now when I hit enter, you'll see what we get back is this little collection right here. The ID of the collection that we got back is the name of the customer, right? And then over here, we added in another field called total, and this is how much the customer spent. So Dave spent $4.75, Karen spent $13.25, Tom spent $199. So all of that information isn't necessarily stored in its own fields in the database, right? If we come back over here, like you'll see there's nothing over here that says that, you know, Karen spent like $13 or however much she spent. We got that information by aggregating the information from the collection together. So let's walk through one more time how this aggregate is set up. So over here we have a filter, right? So this is going to filter uh, the different entries in the collection. So we might not want to aggregate everything in the collection. Um, we could filter it. In this case, we weren't. We were just kind of making an open and close curly bracket, which won't filter it. And then down here, we specified how we wanted to group the information together. And so this might be a little bit confusing. I'm going to try to uh, explain to you guys. So over here, inside of these open and close curly brackets, we're basically defining the structure of the information that we want to get back. So we're essentially defining this structure down here. And we're saying that we want to have a field on here called ID. So the ID is going to be like what identifies each row. Now remember, an ID is something that's unique to each entry in a collection. And so the ID is something that is going to be unique to each of these entries down here. And so basically our goal was to group together all of the information about specific customers. So we wanted to get the totals that each customer spent. And therefore we put customer over here in the ID field because the ID field has to be unique. And so if it has to be unique and we use it on the customers, that means that we'll be able to group all of this information together by the customer. And then over here we have another total, which was sum. And then over here, it's just the total. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to group together all of the entries in the purchase orders table that have the same customer name and it'll add up all of the totals associated with those entries. And so that is basically how we get this down here. So let's try another one. Let's see if we can just modify this a little bit. How about if we wanted to get the totals of each of the products? So let's say we wanted to figure out how much money was spent on each product. Well here, instead of grouping by customer, we're going to want to group by product. And then over here, we can do the same thing. So we don't have to change anything else. So now instead of grouping it by how much the customer spent, we can group it by how much money was sold of the particular product. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to enter that in down here and we'll hit enter. And so now we have different types of information, right? So now instead of grouping everything together by the customer, we're grouping everything together by the product. So pizza, there was a total of $13.25 spent on pizza. There's a total of $11.33 spent on milk. $14.25 was spent on a toothbrush, right? So that is basically how aggregation works. We can specify what field in the collection we want to group everything by. So when we group everything by products, then we get all the products and we group everything by customer, then we get all the customer. And then obviously over here, we're just adding up all the totals 
of those specific entries. So hopefully that makes sense. And aggregation sometimes is a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but hopefully that uh, example at least helps a little bit. So another thing that you might wanna do with aggregation is sort stuff. So down here we have all the money that customers spend on the products, but you'll notice that they're just kind of in random order. If we wanted, we could sort these in ascending or descending order. So I could come down here and I'm just gonna make another open and close parenthesis or curly bracket, and then you'll notice I put a comma there as well. So over here we can define some sorting. So I could say like sort and make an open and closed curly bracket. And then over here we could sort it by the total. And I'm just gonna say negative one. So we'll sort it in descending order. And so total we defined up here as being the sum of all of the totals uh, for each product, right? And so down here, this will sort everything in descending order by those totals. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll copy that and we'll paste it down here. And you'll see now that all of these are ordered by the total. So it's ordered in descending order. So we start with the most expensive and then we go to the least expensive. And I can do the same thing for um, customer. So I could change this to customer. And then if we wanted, we could do exactly the same thing. So now we'll order this by customer or by how much the customer spent. So Tom spent the most and then Mike and then Karen and then Dave. And so uh, that's basically uh, another cool thing that we do with aggregation, which is, you know, obviously sorting things. And then obviously if we wanted, we could, you know, filter these out a little bit more. So I could put a, a filter in here. And so instead of grabbing all of the entries in the collection, we could just grab certain ones. So I could filter like by customer. So I could say like customer, and then we could grab only the customers that were in, um, you know, maybe like Mike and Karen. So now what this will do is it'll only grab the information that matches the filter and we'll be able to grab that information. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it down there. And actually, look, whoops, looks like I had a typo here. So we need this semicolon. All right, so let's do it again. I'm gonna paste this down here. And you'll see now we get essentially the same results, but it's only with these two customers. So, you know, obviously you can, just like anything else, you can filter it out. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. That's kind of the basics of, uh, you know, using aggregation. And like I said, aggregation is basically a way that we can perform different operations on the data in the collection, right? So um, we're not like actually keeping track of like the totals that, you know, Mike or Karen spent. That information is technically like in the database. So we can use aggregation in order to, you know, get that information, organize it, and then display it properly. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.